Hey guys, this is Vyom Joshi with Superior North. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we will be talking about a stock that was suggested by a subscriber. That stock is called AMC. AMC is a theatrical exhibition business, which primarily makes its revenue from box office admissions and food and beverage sales. Today, we will be reviewing the company's 8K current report and its key ratios to better understand the business fundamentals. So let's dive in and look at AMC. Hey guys, let's start off by looking at the Form 8K, which is the current report that AMC filed with the Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC. An 8K is a report of unscheduled material events or corporate changes at a company that could be of importance to shareholders or the SEC. The Form 8K is a valuable source of complete and unfiltered information for investors and researchers. As we can see, this form was filed on December 11th, 2020. So let's dive in and look at what kind of information has AMC shared in this report. Under item 1.01, .01, AMC talks about entry into a material definitive agreement where AMC states that it has debt financed $100 million at 15% interest, which comes due in 2026. After that, the company gives us an update on its current operating conditions where it states that due to a spike in this coronavirus cases, a lot of its movie theaters have shut down and all the movies that do get released go directly to either the home video or streaming markets, which is causing its attendance level at its movie theaters to go down, and it does not know how long it will take before it gets its sales volumes back to the pre-pandemic level. Next, the company gives us an update on its liquidity and going concern risk. Over here, AMC says that as of November 30th, 2020, it had approximately $320 million, as compared to $417.9 million on September 30th, 2020. It says that its average monthly burn rate is approximately $125 million. AMC specifies that in the absence of additional liquidity, the company anticipates the existing cash resources will be depleted during January 2021. And finally, AMC states that given the uncertainty regarding its ability to raise additional liquidity and the uncertainty as to the time at which attendance level would normalize, it has serious doubt as to how long it can stay in business. In short, AMC is telling us that it may be at the brink of bankruptcy. After that, the company gives us an idea as to the ways in which it will be generating additional liquidity. The company states that it will be issuing another 178 million shares. To date, it has already issued 50 million shares, which brought in about $155.2 million. And the company specifies that by doing this additional equity financing, it is greatly diluting its existing shareholders' ownership within the company. After that, the company says that it is negotiating with its landlords to defer and reduce some of the payments that are coming due in 2021 and beyond, which amount to about $400 million. AMC says that due to its liquidity challenges and in order to avoid bankruptcy, AMC must reach accommodations with its landlords to abate or defer a substantial portion of the company's rent obligations. At the end, the company says that if it's unable to reach an agreement with its landlords, it will be pushed into bankruptcy. The next liquidity source that the company talks about is its potential European financing, where AMC says that it has reached no agreement providing for additional indebtedness. After that, AMC talks about issuing additional first lien debt, which we talked about earlier, where the company would be getting $100 million at 15% interest. Additionally, Mudrick, which is the bondholder, would also be receiving a commitment fee equaling to 8.214 million shares, which again decreases or dilutes the existing shareholders' ownership within the company. Next, AMC talks about its other creditor discussions. Over here, AMC talks about how in order to make sure that its debt does not get out of control, it will be converting its second lien debt to equity, which would help manage its leverage, but would be dilutive to holders of its common stock. So essentially, if you're a junior bondholder, the company plans on pushing you into the equity section. That way, when you look at the company's balance sheet, it would show less debt, which would mean it's less leveraged. And finally, the company talks about how it continues to explore joint ventures and other arrangements with existing business partners to generate additional liquidity. After going over all the substantial sources of liquidity, the company says that it still has substantial doubt and that even after all this liquidity is injected into the business, it does not know that if it will ever return back to the operating level and the profitability that it had before the pandemic. The company says that it does not believe that any individual source of liquidity or all these liquidity sources would be enough to address the company's liquidity requirements. Lastly, the company says that if it's unable to generate liquidity from one of these sources that they described, the company's common stock would likely suffer a total loss of its investment. Now let's go over some of the risk factors that the company goes over in its 8K. Over here, the company talks about the risk related to its business. The first item that it talks about is because there is substantial doubt about its ability to continue as a going concern for a reasonable period of time, any investment in its Class A common stock is highly speculative. Holders of its Class A common stock could suffer a total loss of their investment. 
So the company is telling all its stockholders and potential stockholders that if you were to invest in AMC stock, you are likely to suffer a total loss of your investment. Next, the company talks about how the COVID-19 pandemic has disrupted its business and will continue to adversely affect its business, theaters, and results of operations and liquidity. We discussed this point a little bit earlier where as far as operations go, we saw that there has been a decline in the number of people attending theaters and a lot of the movies are directly going straight to the streaming services. And as far as liquidity goes, we saw all the indebtedness that the company is in and how it's trying to generate more cash in order to just stay in business. And lastly, the company says that its substantial level of indebtedness and its current liquidity constraints could adversely affect its financial conditions and its ability to service its indebtedness which could negatively impact its shareholders' ability to recover their investment in the common stock. After reviewing this 8K current report, we can see that management is putting out a bleak and unfiltered picture of how close AMC is to bankruptcy. Let's quickly look at the company's key ratios now to see if the numbers align with what we're seeing in this report. Hey guys, now let's look at the key ratios. I'm on Morningstar looking at AMC stock under key ratios, financials. The first item on the list is the revenue which is measured in millions of US dollars. We will be focusing all our attention on the trailing 12 month numbers because as we saw in the 8K, the management is very uncertain and it does not know if it will able to regain the sales volumes that it had before the pandemic. So looking at the historical numbers is not going to give us an accurate picture on what the future holds. So it's important for us to just stay focused on what the trailing 12 month figures show to get a better idea of the true economic condition of this company. The revenue for the chilling 12 months was about $2.5 billion, which was half of what the company made back in 2019. Next, looking at the operating income. The operating income is the amount of money that's left with the company once it pays for the cost of goods sold and the operating expenses. We can see that AMC reported a $966 million loss for its chilling 12 month operating income. After that, looking at the net income, the net income is the amount of money that's left with the company once it has paid for the cost of goods, all the expenses, interest on its obligations and so forth. We can see that AMC reported a loss of $3.6 billion for the chilling 12 months. Next, looking at the dividends, we can see that from 2015 through 2019, AMC paid about 80 cent dividend. And for the chilling 12 month, we did see a cut in AMC's dividend, primarily because the company, as we saw, is trying to conserve as much cash as possible. And the last thing they want is cash to depart from its operating business. Next, looking at the shares outstanding, we can see that the company has about 105 million shares outstanding for the chilling 12 months. As we saw in the 8K, the company will be issuing another 178 million shares, which additionally dilutes the existing shareholders' ownership within the company. Next, looking at the book value per share. The book value is what we get when we subtract the company's total liabilities from its total assets. We can see that for the chilling 12 month, the book value per share is a negative $10.97 per share. What this means is the company has more liabilities than its assets. After that, looking at the free cash flow, the free cash flow is what we get when we subtract the company's capital spending from its operating cash flow. As you can see for the chilling 12 months, the free cash flow is negative $729 million. Additionally, we saw that in its 8K, the company specified that it is burning through about $125 million of cash every month. Given the uncertainty surrounding the company's operating cash flow as well as its free cash flow, it does not make sense for us to look at the DCF discounted free cash flow analysis because it would not give us a good idea or a good picture as to what the future may hold. After that, looking at the profitability of the company, the first item on the list is the net margin. The net margin compares the company's bottom line to its top line. So it's the net income divided by the revenue. We can see that the net margin for the chilling 12 months is a negative number, primarily because the net income was negative. Next, looking at the return on equity, the return on equity compares the company's net income to its shareholders equity. We can see that for the chilling 12 months, there isn't a meaningful return on equity because the net income is negative and the shareholders equity is negative, primarily because the company owes more. In other words, it has more liabilities than its assets, causing the shareholders equity to turn negative. So if you have a negative net income divided by a negative shareholders equity, you're going to be getting a positive number. And that clearly does not make sense because you cannot have a positive return on equity with negative income. Similarly, for the chilling 12 months, the return on invested capital is not meaningful. Finally, looking at the interest coverage, the interest coverage compares the company's income to its interest obligations. In other words, it gives us an idea of how many times can the company pay off its interest obligations. In 2019, we can see that the company could only pay off its interest obligations 0.5 times using its income. In other words, even before the pandemic, the company did not have enough money to pay its interest obligations. 
So clearly, for the chilling 12 months when the pandemic hit and its revenues slowed down, the company had to take on more debt and do more equity financing in order to pay off its interest obligations and stay away from declaring bankruptcy. And when we look at the past 10 years, we can see that the company barely had enough money every year for the past 10 years to pay off its interest obligations. Next, let's look at the financial health of the company. Focusing on the balance sheet items, all of these numbers are in percentages. Just a reminder that total assets is equal to total liabilities plus shareholders equity. So when we look at these percentages, the total asset percentage has to equal the total liabilities and equity percentage. Over here, we can see that for the total shareholder equity section for the latest quarter, it is a negative 21.86%. What this means is the company has a lot more liabilities than it does its assets. And in order to balance the equation of assets being equal to liabilities plus shareholders equity, the shareholders equity has to turn negative in order to match up. So the shareholders equity is negative because the company owes more than it has in its assets. And if the company were to liquidate today, we can be certain that the shareholders would be wiped clean. They would not get a single penny from this company. Now, looking at the liquidity of this company, we can see that the current ratio, which is comparison of the current assets to its current liabilities, we can see that for the latest quarter, it's a 0.38. Ideally, we want to see the current ratio to be at least a 1.0 or higher. And this clearly goes to show that the company is in a bind and it does not have current assets available to meet its current liabilities. Next, looking at the financial leverage and the debt to equity ratio, we can see that the company since 2016 has been racking on more debt. So it is not a trend that has emerged ever since the pandemic in 2020. The company has been struggling and taking on more debt since 2016. Now let's compare AMC's valuations to that of the S&P 500. The S&P 500 is the aggregate of the top 500 companies in the United States. We can see that AMC is lacking a lot of these valuation metrics. The price to earnings is not a meaningful ratio because its earnings were negative. The price to book is not meaningful because the book value, in other words, the shareholder's equity was negative. The price to sales is a 0.1 as compared to the S&P 500, which is at 2.8. The price to cash flow is not meaningful for AMC because its cash flow was negative. And finally, the dividend yield. We can see that AMC's dividend yield is a 10.8% which is much higher than what the S&P 500 has, which is a 1.6. A high dividend yield should not be something that you should focus on when investing in a security, especially when a security is distressed, primarily because when the company fails to declare dividends, that dividend yield can vanish anytime. And given the position that AMC is in right now, it is trying to conserve as much cash as possible. And I think the last thing they want is to pay dividends and cash leaving their operating business. Hey guys, now let's wrap it all up. We saw that AMC's 8K current report pointed out that the company is gasping for breath in order to stay alive. It does not have enough cash on hand and is in a liquidity bind. The company is doing debt financing as well as equity financing, which is diluting the existing shareholders ownership within the company. Additionally, on the most recent $100 million of debt financing that the company did, it would be paying 15% interest on that. And what this means is even if AMC were to return back to its pre-pandemic level revenues, the company would have to pay its interest of another $15 million in addition to whatever it was paying before the pandemic. So clearly not a good picture for AMC. The net income would be severely impacted because of the increased interest obligations that the company will have post-pandemic. Given that the company can survive and does not declare bankruptcy in the next year or so. We saw that the 8K also warned all the stock investors that if they were to invest their money in the EMC stock, it is likely that they would lose everything in this investment. The key ratios that we looked at went hand in hand with what we saw and read in the 8K. And this is precisely why it's important for us to review the fundamentals. If you are one of the investors who just believes buy low, sell high, you may look at the year range of the price and say that, hey, the current stock price is towards the low end of the year's range. It is likely that after the pandemic, the company's stock would go up. Now, it's fairly rational to think that way. However, now that we know the fundamentals, we looked at the 8K, we see what the management is facing right now, and it is likely that the company is going to be bankrupt before the stock even gets to the near $8 that it was trading at. Additionally, without looking at the fundamentals, you may think that, hey, this is a high risk, high reward kind of bet. But there is a fallacy in that thinking because if you know or if you are certain that it is going to be a high reward investment, then it is no longer a high risk investment. So there's a fallacy in that thinking that you're going to be getting a higher reward just because you took on higher risk. And lastly, the way Warren Buffett looks at risk is he does not look at it by looking at the price movement or the volatility in the stock price. 
In fact, he looks at the stability and the predictability of the free cash flows and the revenue that the company is generating and is able to generate into the future. And given that the management who is rooting for the company does not know if AMC would be able to generate the revenue and the profitability that it had pre-pandemic is clearly a sign of high risk. Despite how cheap the stock price may look over a one-year, five-year, or 10-year window, this stock does not provide the margin of safety that we as value investors seek. So I would pass up on this investment. Hey guys, that is all I have for you this week. Hopefully you found this video on AMC interesting. If you like this content, please do like, share, comment, and subscribe to my channel. And if you have any suggestions as to which stock I should review next, please leave it in the comment section below. I will greatly appreciate it. Thank you.